Do you remember your first letter? Uh, gosh, it's been about uh, 15 years. Did you ever uh, write to Fritos? I did write to Fritos. What did you ask them? I said, you know, I bought a bag of Fritos, and, <laughs> you know, I, I actually described a Frito. I said they were all curled and crunchy and salty and hard, and I threw the bag away, even though I was describing a Frito. And then I bought another bag. I got the same thing. It was <laughs> curled and crunchy and hard, and I, I said, help me, Fritos, help me. Help me. <laughs> and then, you know, I just... Uh, Kind of, and then I even wrote to the Bonami guy, you know. What did you say to I him? I said, you know, your name was smushed and smudged and uh, Gordon Brucar, are you the third, are you the fifth? And I thought, the fifth guy named Gordon Brucar and the Bonami thing is, what a weird life he's got, you know? <laughs> and we just kind of communicated. That was actually in one of the books. You see, he's a little nuts, right, your friend? A little? <laughs> <laughs> Let me read you a letter he wrote to the Oakland Chamber of Commerce. The Oakland Chamber. Oakland Chamber of Commerce. I want to come to your city for the Tiny Man Convention. Let me be clear, we are not midgets, small persons, diminutives, petitios, or fun size. We are tiny men. I would like to buy tickets to the performance of Tiny Bennett. This is a tiny man that sings like Tony Bennett. They write him back. Dear Mr. Nancy, we could not find any information on a show appearing with Mr. Tiny Bennett, but I attached a schedule for Tony. He writes back to them. I told you it's not tiny. It's a small McCartney. He is a fun size man that looks like Paul McCartney. And these correspondences go back and forth. <laughs> they answer. They answer. Because they they're so afraid of losing a customer. Why did he they answer? Because they have yeah. fear. Yeah. Fear. <laughs> All right, let's do another one. This is about read a letter. This is about opening a sandwich stand in a casino bathroom. You have that? Yes. Okay, read this letter. You want to read it? Go ahead, you read it. All right, All right I'll read it. Who's it to? Uh, this is to the Chinook Winds Indian Casino. I want to sell ham sandwiches in your restrooms. <laughs> they want to have a sign on the restroom mirror that says, We have the potty melt. <laughs> Can you direct me to what office I would contact to request casino credit? They reply, Dear Mr. Nancy, we thank you for your interest, but at this time we are not interested in putting any businesses in the restroom. <laughs> we have five food outlets for our customers. Thank you for considering us, but at this time we are fine. What do you make of, I mean, your mind is wild. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you, I mean, you are. You, you, you know you're a little nuts. Well, what do you think of the craziest one you ever... Uh, wrote that you got Mickey Mantle wasn't bad. Mickey Mantle was pretty crazy. Uh, that Hamsterdam one was kind of... Hamsterdam, What was yeah. that? Um, I had written a letter to uh, a hotel in uh, Amsterdam. I said, I am staging my play in Amsterdam and need to know what health permits I need. My play is called Hamsterdam. <laughs> it is telling uh, of the history of your beautiful city using hamsters. <laughs> I need to bring 300 loose hamsters into your hotel and have them live in the room with me. This is for 12 nights. <laughs> The hotel replied, our hotel cannot accommodate 300 hamsters in a room, please. I wrote, I wrote him back. I understand your concern about keeping 300 hamsters in my room. It is wrong. I now realize this is a disease issue. That is why I've decided to restage my Hamsterdam play. It is now called Amster Clam. It involves a telling of, of your beautiful city using clams. I will check in with 500 clams and have them live in the room with me. Clams are not fi like filthy hamsters. They are wet. Please alert how Housekeeping, so when they open the door, they can spray. <laughs> oh, man. Now, we, let's hear about uh, your request to bring an ice machine to a hotel. We had other better ones. All right. Okay. There was one you wanted to check in. I like the one when you wanted to check in. Now out. The new letters from a nut. Hold it up, Larry. Okay. That's how we okay. get sales. Okay. <laughs> the one Thank that you, I, this one, I'm, uh, Okay, one more. I like this one that I, uh, you know, that I wrote to a, I was trying to get a sign meeting made, uh, I am opening a business next to a Cuckoo Roo restaurant. My business is called I Am The Walrus. I need one big sign that I'll put next to them so the one big sign says I Am The Walrus Cuckoo Roo. <laughs> you know Cuckoo Roo Chicken in L.A.? Hey, you're a genius. Oh, that is oh, awfully nice. Thanks thank for introducing nice. him to the world. Thank you. All right, man. all you people on the internet, here he is. Finally, the mystery is over. The name is Barry Martyr. The book is All New Letters from a Nut by Ted L. Nancy. This is Ted Nancy. Jerry stays with us. We'll be right back. The question here is, when we get married, do we have to get rid of any evidence that we've ever had a prior relationship? She wants this guy to get rid of a, a sofa, and she's got her husband's old prosthetic leg. <laughs> Are you kidding?
kidding? The, the ashes, the, co the couch they had sex on, the yeah. plastic leg. It's a recipe <laughs> for disaster. It is, it's, it's, it's getting weirder. It's ridiculous. <laughs> it, is, it is getting weirder. Yeah. Yeah. They're so moronic, I don't even want to help them. <laughs> <laughs> That is from Jerry's show, The Marriage Ref. Madonna, Larry David, Ricky Gervais. What qualified them to give advice? How did you come up with this? Who, I, I, just, I just love talking about marriage fights. I find them funny. And I love to hear what, how people respond to, to uh, uh, other, people's mar other people's marital issues are comedy for the world. Not yours. Not theirs. mine. No. <laughs> no, and not yours. No, not mine, but theirs. But theirs. Anybody else, it makes you laugh. So I just thought it would be fun to have a show with funny people coming on and uh, talking about marriage. It seems to provoke natural comedy. I love that show. When is it on? It's coming back on NBC, I think, uh, the beginning of uh, next year, in January of next it's year. It's not on the early winter, right? I don't know what they do. But they're, they're starting to shoot them now, the next season. Explain television to Explain me. television? Yeah. It's like very Seinfeld, simple. Like Seinfeld, you lasted four years without being a hit? Yes. Couldn't happen today, right? Oh, I don't know about that. Don't you believe quality always survives somehow? <laughs> you really believe you that? You busted out laughing at that? <laughs> quality survives. Quality survives somehow, always. Not always, but most of the time. Don't I mean, you believe a, a in that? A television network would stick with a show having... Anything that's good, eventually, somehow... Finds its way. Finds its way. I, I kind of, you have to believe in that or you don't go into this business, right? I guess so, yeah. yeah. But it can be disappointing when you have to deal with... How are you... I've never been disappointed, fortunately. You've always had success? Always, yes. How do you deal with I'm the suits in the business? The suits? The suits. The lawsuits or no, the, the guys wearing suits? The guys uh, up at the, at I the top I agree floor. with them. It's like a wife. You agree. You, want, you say that makes perfect sense. From now on, we're going to do it that way. And then you do whatever you want. <laughs> of course, the suits don't watch. They don't know. They don't even watch their own network. <laughs> so you agree with them. They call you in. You got a Seinfeld episode they yeah. not like. You, you tell them, okay, we'll change when it. When we were doing Seinfeld, a lot of times they would come in and they would go, we don't understand what you're doing. What about the bubble? And, but go ahead. Bringing up the bubble. That was the way Seinfeld worked. Why did it work? It worked because there was a very loyal, powerful audience out there that loved what we did. As, no matter, and no matter how crazy it was, they stuck with us. And the networks, they do watch that and they understand that. So even though they didn't get it, they knew the audience got it and the audience liked it. So we were free. And that's the ultimate thing in this business, when you're free to do whatever you want. That's, that's the ultimate. And you have attained that now. I have. Yeah. You have a... Well, obviously. You have a... I don't, I don't need to be here. I'm here because I'm free to do whatever I want. So you actually <laughs> chose to come here. I choose to come. I am no place that I don't want to be. What time do you wake up? What do you do in the morning? What do you do? Do you really want to know? Yeah, what do you do? I have three kids. That's enough. They're, they're, they're nine, seven, and five. If you have three kids, it's like having a blender, but you don't have the top. <laughs> <laughs> you wake up ready. You hit the ground ready. So I, I wake it. up and I have breakfast with the kids and we watch Elmo. And Elmo. people say to me, are you ever going to do another TV series? And I, and I say, and I watch Elmo every morning and he jumps around and he tells jokes or she, I don't even know what the hell this thing is. <laughs> and I watch Elmo every morning and I think, you know what? Let him bust his little red ass. <laughs> Jerry is headed for Broadway. Broadway's next. We're back with Jerry Seinfeld. We're joined by Colin Quinn. Colin is a comedian, writer, and his new Broadway show, Long Story Short, History of the World in 75 Minutes. Debuts, uh, you said November 9th, right? I said no, that's uh, 13 days after Jerry's wife's book really comes out. October 26th, October Jerry's 20, wife's book comes out. 28th. Now. 20, stop. 26, Jerry. Okay. 26. <laughs> All right. All right, tell me about this show. My wife's book. Why are you producing a Broadway show? I'm directing, Larry. Directing. directing. Oh, you're I directing. wear a cape. I have a beret. <laughs> I have a cane. He sits like this in his third row. Mm, I don't know. <laughs> really? <laughs> uh, how did this come about? This is a great story. We started this in uh, the spring, right. right? We were sitting around. We have breakfast together, Colin and I, uh, multiple times a week. Like you, you go to Nate and Al's, right? right. We have a place here. I'm not going to mention the name. Okay. It's not the diner from Seinfeld. <laughs> okay. 
And uh, I said to him, I said, you know what you should do? You should do a one-man show because one of the things that a comedian has that no other person, an actor doesn't have, is if you don't feel like dealing with networks or producers, you can go right to the audience and present what you do. And he was looking to do something, and he was thinking of television and movies, and you're talking to people and having meetings, and it gets annoying. And he said, let's just do a one-man show where you can just go out and do your thing. What's the history of the world in 75 minutes? Jerry wasn't done. Now look, Larry, um, the history of the world in 75 minutes. So I he goes and chair. writes this thing. <laughs> oh. Colin, I don't know why you're laughing. I don't know. <laughs> okay. What is the history? Because nobody's of the world? paying attention to you now. You <laughs> ask Barry to read this letter. He goes, I don't want to read that one. I read another one. Right. And you let him get away with it. You're Larry King. You should said, Barry. I don't care. All right, I'm sorry. <laughs> How did, what is the history of the world? Jerry's on fire tonight. If you notice, no, he is. He oh, can, he's cooking. He's rolling tonight. What is the history of the world in 75 this. minutes? It's uh, it's just that. It, that's exactly what it is. It's, it's what is it that you don't get about Will that? Will you begin with Genesis? Well, no. No. Larry. No. no. <laughs> Larry, Way I, before that. You know, I start, Larry, no offense, I start with the New Testament. No, I'm kidding. But we start with, we start with the cavemen. We get to Genesis in a way. You have cavemen. Cavemen, start with the cavemen. And then the birth of Larry King right the after that, right? <laughs> oh. Oh, I'm oh. sorry. I hate this job. The Greeks first. Excuse me. The, the Greeks, Greeks first. For making fun of anything. Okay. The Greeks first. Well, when you're directing no? a one-man show, what do you tell them? Move to the left. Stand there. What do you do? That's what I do. Exactly that. Move to the left. What is the director who directs a ten-person show say? Move to the left. Yeah. You know? I go, well, who do you have to know to get a latte around here? That's what I do. <laughs> it's all a monologue, right? That it's, all it's, you have background it's, scenes. Yeah. All those background scenes, yeah. A lot, bunch of background stuff and music and lighting and everything. But, but Colin really has a very, um, he's very smart. He doesn't seem smart. But he's very intelligent. He's well read. And he knows about the culture and, you know, different he's smart, empires. Right? Then that he's works really for him. smart, yeah. Erudite. He's Just died. the fact that I know the word erudite should tell you I'm kind of smart. <laughs> he knows about, you know, Serbian empires and Ottomans and... Will the public get it, though? Yeah, it's a comedy. Must see, I know comedy. He's but do you smart. know Serbian empires? No. No. I don't know half of what he's talking about. So why are no, we going to laugh? <laughs> We're gonna because laugh. we present it as a comedy. It's, the, it's a comedy telling of the history of the world in 75 minutes. Is that clear, Did Larry? You write it? Yes. Did you write it all? He yeah. wrote the whole thing. <laughs> And <laughs> you're the director. I'm the director. Are you nervous? Have you ever seen... <laughs> this doesn't look like Broadway to you. No, no, no. 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 <laughs> you're thinking Broadway? This is Maybe off-Broadway. Yeah, no. Think like Tommy Toon, Christian Chenoweth. That's what I like. Uh, are you nervous about opening night? Oh, no, we're terrified. Are you in rehearsal? <laughs> sure. We're in rehearsal. We rehearsed yesterday. Yeah. What do you... Ch you knew to 75 minutes. You know what you're doing. Yeah. There's no intermission, I guess. No intermission. No. Here's the great appeal, and this is why you will love a show like this. You think, I could be at dinner by 9. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> You're dinner That's by a, 9. Yeah. You're asleep by 12 and 8 now the next morning. <laughs> so it's you beautiful. can pitch this easy to people. This is why get people love early. this show. We I will get you, you the hell out of there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that is why people love this show. No, you will like it if they look at their watch. Yeah. That means you're succeeding. Yeah. You won't like it. We I apologize if it's 76 minutes. <laughs> He's been on a roll. I'm not going to make it to the next segment, am I? Be honest no, with you. No, I'm not. <laughs> but November 9th. But Thank wait a minute. You. Helen Hayes Theater. Do you know how rare it is? You know, because you know a little bit about this business. We started in a, how many seats down there in 45 Bleecker? A hundred seats. Oh, you seat, did it all yeah, Broadway. Right? We did a hundred seat seats. theater. Investors came in. They loved the show. They said, we, want, we didn't want to take it to Broadway. No. We were just screwing around. And they go, this is a Broadway show. We went, really? They go, yeah, we'll put up all the it's money. True. It is true. You didn't put up any of your no. money? No. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck, Colin. <laughs> Thank you, Larry. We'll be back with more of this. By the way, if you understand this, please send us a card. I understand this. <laughs> CNN. Don't go away.